Alain Authority's foil attempt to smuggle 45 trucks of diesel. Ministry of Health urges GAIA to open medical files for Hajj pilgrims. And Indonesia's Mount Lokon erupts again. This is 7 National News. In our top story this evening, the Alain authorities have foiled an attempt by Asian and Arab dri drivers to smuggle in 45 trucks of diesel into the Northern Emirates. According to a local paper, the trucks were seized in various parts of Alain. Officials stated that the trucks were looking to take advantage of the recent fuel shortage and offload the diesel onto authorised tankers and sell it onto the black market. The official added that the police will meet with leaders from the municipality and the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company to combat the problem through more tough penalties, as well as an increase in border checkpoints. The Ministry of Health has asked the General Authority for Islamic Affairs to coordinate all harsh campaigns in the UAE by opening medical files for travellers that are on the religious journey, from leaving the country up until the individual returns home. Dr Abdul Karim al zaruni the head of the Pilgrimage Medical Committee, stated that the Pilgrim's Health file should be added to his medical file registered in UAE hospitals to ensure their safety, either before his or her's trip or during the Hajj. Hajj is the fifth pillar of Islam where Muslims join a series of rituals and processions in Mecca for a week. The religious journey must be carried out for Muslims once in a lifetime. Around two million men and women travel to Mecca for the annual Hajj per year. Construction of the Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan Bridge over Swat River in Pakistan is underway. According to Abdullah Al Ghafli, the Director General of the UAE project to help Pakistan, the bridge is set to connect 15 towns and 45 villages. In statements to WAM, Al Ghafli added that the UAE funded 450 metre long and 10 metre wide structure will serve around 500,000 people in the Khyber. Pakhtunkhwa province, northwest of Pakistan, which was severely affected by flooding in August last year. When completed before the end of this year, the new bridge will serve 4,000 cars per day on two reserve lanes, as well as pedestrians on two others. 67% of companies in the region are hiring, an increase from 34% in the first quarter of the year, according to a survey by recruitment firm Antal. And here in the UAE, the report shows that 59% of businesses are looking to hire for mid to senior level positions, up from 46% in Q1. According to a local paper, the results from the survey also expected 68% of UAE firms to recruit by the end of the year, ranking the highest for the region. On a global scale, the UAE came fifth behind the Philippines, India, China, Brazil and Slovakia. The findings were the result of around 500 private companies that did not include government entities. The report also showed that 10% of companies in the Emirates said they would lay off employees in the next three months. In its second year, Deman held a pre-Ramadan seminar for diabetics and their families. Health and medical experts provided the community essential tips on how to manage diabetes during the holy month. According to them, while fasting is beneficial overall, it is important to provide patients with the proper guidelines and support to ensure their health and safety during the month-long abstinence. 70-year-old Sami Ahmad, an Abu Dhabi resident, has been suffering from diabetes for many years now. Despite his condition, he says he never refrained from fasting during the holy month. On Saturday, he joined other diabetic and high-risk residents at the second pre-Ramadan diabetes seminar organized by Daman with hopes of gaining more insights on managing the disease while fasting. You just want to learn more about this disease and how to handle it, how to avoid problems because I'm getting older, you know. We are fasting from when, from when you, we, we are young, you know. It's easy for fast. But with sugar, uh, somebody have a little problem for that. But to understand, to keep yourself in safe side, it's better to come to take information about uh, the sugar and uh, about food, how to pass with the, without problems. 
it's better for us. Actually, I'm worried about my parents so that I can guide them. So that during the fasting, what should they take care? What signs they should have? What to do when they get these kind of signs? At a higher level of glucose, or do what they should, where to go in the in case of emergency. Conducted by a professional team from the company's health support program, it discussed type 2 diabetes and obesity, as well as featured a session about healthy nutrition and lifestyles for diabetics in Ramadan. Authorities say last year's success indicates a growing awareness. This year, they opened the event to the public to educate and help a greater number of people manage their condition as well as maximize the benefits of fasting to the body. If you are a diabetic patient, you will never be really healthy. But you can prevent complications and you can, pre can live an absolutely normal life. And our program wants to help people to live this normal life by changing their lifestyle, living a healthy lifestyle, and by that preventing complications. They also added that among the many challenges diabetics face during Ramadan include the fluctuating levels of blood sugar, which may lead to serious complications if not handled properly. And with fasting longer than usual at 15 hours this year, doctors advised residents to stay well hydrated during the hours of non-fasting and be mindful of their diet. The physician will give them the, the proper answer whether they can fast or not. This is one. And the second, the medication itself is going to change because the timing are different, the uh, types of food they're eating and the, the management is totally different. So this is number one. This is number advice number one. Just consult your physician. Advice number two is uh, to have a healthy eating habits during Ramadan. No, no need to feast. Okay, We're fasting, but we don't have to feast on, on food. And thirdly, they have to have some sort of a regimen of exercising. Even even if it's just 30 minutes of walking, it would be much more better than not having anything else. Diabetes remains to be among the leading lifestyle diseases in the UAE. And while experts are already seeing an increase in the levels of awareness and information, they say efforts such as this are critical in ensuring the public safety for a safe and successful Ramadan. Khadija Sali, 7 National News. Colourful, thought-provoking and inspiring works of art by young adults with special needs are currently on display at a local cafe in Dubai. The artists who created the 13 art pieces are members of the Mawaheb from the Beautiful People Group. Mawaheb is Arabic for talented. The creativity of each artist is clearly reflected and showcased in every piece, where landmark icons in the UAE such as the Burj Al Arab and the Palm served as inspiration. Among the fascinating artworks on display is an art dress that features a four-metre painted and stitched train. Organisers say the exhibit will run until the end of July, followed by an auction later this year. The paintings that you're seeing in the background have been painted on canvas by a young adults with special needs. They were actu they're actually projected from actual pictures and uh, then we, uh, together with Harriet Watt, painted it on a dress and we had a fashion show. And we need the community support uh, to support us in the auction and we plan to raise 100,000 dirhams. Many of these artists follow a five-hour daily training session at Mawahab to enhance their skills, painting techniques and confidence. The students communicate their ideas through various means, including sign language. According to their proud parents, the art exhibit also marks the progress of their children. He do sign language and at the same time he teaches them sign language and they all understand the colours, which is as simple as within a minute you learn all the colours. Looking to news abroad now, Indonesia's Mount Lokon erupted again this morning, spewing up hot lava and toxic ash 3,000 metres into the air. According to the local media, the volcano erupted at 10.35 a.m. local time, sending an ash column north in the direction of Mandano. The alert level for the volcano was raised to the highest level earlier in the week, following a spike in seismic activities. So far, there have been no reports of volcanic ash disrupting flights since the eruption started on Friday. Authorities have expanded the danger zone to four kilometres from the crater, and more than 4,500 people have been evacuated to nine shelters. Some villagers who had been earlier evacuated were back home when the eruptions occurred on Sunday, and police have again urged them to return to the shelters. 
Japanese Prime Minister Naoto Kan visited the Fukushima prefecture on Saturday, ahead of the completion date for step one of the operating schedule to bring the nuclear reactors to a cold shutdown. Four months on, the Fukushima plant is still leaking radiation from the nuclear accident. Kan said workers were on track to achieve a target of stable cooling of the reactors by mid-July and that the government hoped to move forward its deadline of putting the crippled reactors into a cold shutdown by January. The radiation crisis at Tokyo Electric Power Co.'s Fukushima plant, triggered by the March the 11th earthquake and tsunami, has sparked debate about the role of nuclear power in the quake-prone, resource-poor Japan, as well as concerns about power shortages with 35 of the nation's 54 reactors now stopped. And up next, we have the day's business news, so stay with us.